So what we have here is a coffee cup on a loudspeaker and we're driving the loudspeaker with a signal generator here where we can vary the frequency so the rate at which the speaker goes up and down and the amplitude which just means the volume. Then that goes to a power amplifier which is just an amplifier goes into the speaker so it's a very simple setup. It allows us to connect something which might seem very mundane like a cup of coffee very special to me though a cup of coffee with very, what might appear to be very esoteric physics. This is one of my, if not my favorite image in um, all of physics basically. Uh, Brady and I have talked about this at length before in various other videos, but let me just explain briefly what it is. What we have is a ring of iron atoms. And those iron atoms have been painstakingly placed there using something called a scanning tunneling microscope. That's a remarkable feat of atomic scale engineering, but that's not the good thing. What those atoms, those iron atoms are sitting on is a copper surface where the electrons of the copper surface spread out like a sea, like a fluid, like a liquid. And what you're seeing within what they call a quantum corral here, is the wave-like nature of those electrons. You see in the waves that those electrons uh, make because they scatter off the atoms, just like waves scattering off when they hit an object um, in, a, in a lake or a puddle, or you drop a stone in a puddle, you see the ripples. That's what you're seeing. You're seeing those ripples of those electron waves. And what's remarkable, and this really truly is, remarkable is that this which is happening on a 10 nanometer roughly 10 nanometer lens scale so a tiny tiny not beyond microscopic nanoscopic lens scale is that the pattern we see there the mathematics of that pattern is exactly the same as the pattern we see in this coffee cup You will have seen patterns like these if you're sitting on a train and the train's bouncing around and it's quite an unsteady and you've got your cup of coffee sitting in front of you and you look down what you'll see are these concentric rings you'll see this pattern and what that is is a manifestation of something called a Bessel function the, the mathematics that describes this pattern is something called a Bessel function and it comes from what it is is a standing wave. So just as we have, let me get the guitar, Brady. Oh, this is actually, this will work well, because this is 1D and that's 2D. You're very familiar with guitars, and you're very familiar with strings and the sounds they make and the notes they make. And that's because what we have here is a wave that's confined to that string. It's called a standing wave, or alternatively, it's called a resonance. Of the, of the string. So that's a one-dimensional system. It's a line, it's a string, it's one-dimensional. What we have here is a two-dimensional analog, a two-dimensional um, standing wave. So instead of it being along a line, this covers an area. When the iron atoms are placed on here, yeah. forming the sort of defense of the corral, yeah. what's then causing the wave inside? Is it something coming off? It's the, the electrons, the electrons are traveling all the time. And so the electrons are scattering off the, um, the ring and then they're scattering back so you've got a wave going in that direction and a wave coming back and that's exactly how a standing wave forms except in this case it's in two dimensions so it's a reflection wave going that way wave coming back they form a standing wave so that's what you, what you see there what what is it about the corral of 50 atoms or so that caused that wave to show itself whereas it doesn't show itself outside brilliant question actually it does show itself outside look carefully you see these ripples you see these rings and you see the rings around this it does show itself when those electron waves are traveling and they if, if that was a perfectly defect free surface if there was nothing on that surface there were no um absorbed free atoms, there was nothing on the surface perfectly flat, then those electron waves wouldn't scatter off anything, you wouldn't see these patterns. What you see now is the atom, the, 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 the electron wave comes along, the atom is there, and that atom scatters the wave. Like, the like, wave reflects. Like rocks in the sea. Exactly, precisely like rocks in the sea. And you, you can see that, you know, the, the waves rippling off from that. It's exactly the same effect. And okay, I can see, so I can see a rock in the sea here. Yeah, exactly. What is it about the corral? It's the symmetry. It's, the key thing here is the symmetry, it's a circle, and if you have a square 
um, arrangement of atoms, different pattern. If you have a triangular arrangement, different pattern. Hexagonal arrangement. They even did st what are called stadia, which are semicircle and then like a rectangular bit and then another semicircle to look for patterns, in fact, chaotic patterns in, in those. But the beauty of this is the circular symmetry. So what we have here is um, a standing wave with a particular symmetry, and that's where this Bessel function idea comes in. And so what's happening here is we've got this, stru this structure. What we have here is something which is on, happening on, a, on a, a real world length scale. About 32 million million of these could fit on the surface of this. And this is what blows physicists' mind when the same maths that describes this describes this, despite the fact you've got this huge disparity in lens scales, that's when we really get excited, that's when we really get fascinated by these things. What I'm trying to avoid here is we reach a point where the, the amplitude the magnitude of the wave is so big that the fluid starts to slosh, but I want to keep the surface um, flat. Otherwise... But, but I have captured people doing it wrong. Yes, you have captured me doing it wrong very, very many times. And there's a classic paper actually in an uh, American Physical Society journal from a couple of years ago where they worked out the key properties of slosh and coffee and the best strategy to adopt if you want to walk with your cu cup of coffee along the corridor and not, unlike me, spill it everywhere. So, what I'll do is I'll play around with the amplitude and the frequency and you can see the different patterns. So, I'll just build the amplitude. You can see the whole thing shake. And because it's, it's something called a resonance, there will be a certain frequency where we expect to see a stronger response. That's what a resonance is. And now what we can do is we can bring the amplitude up. And I'll show you what happens if we get the amplitude too high. You start to see that sloshing motion and you get another set of patterns. We're now up at 30, 30 hertz. And now it's gone. So we're still vibrating, but we're at 38 hertz. Circle and it's gone. Oh, can you see them? Yeah. It oh, we're really? Okay. So the slosh in motion seems to have gone. Oh, now I can see it. Yeah. Cool. The electrons on the copper surface that are inside the corral, yep. are they basically moving along, hitting a wall? Coming back. back. Exactly. That's exactly they're, it. They're trapped. Yeah, they're trapped. That's exactly what it is. That's what a standing wave is, a trapped wave. Yep. They're, they're trapped in the corral and then they interfere with yep. each other in this special way. That's exactly it. In the, cup. the cup, it's exactly the, except th these are our atoms. The edge of the cup is our, our atoms. This is our boundary. And what's the coffee? And the coffee is the same as the electron fluid here. So the coffee is playing the role of the electron fluid. Mm -hmm.